Hello and welcome. You're tuned in to the best in true crime talk radio. This is True Crime Tuesday, and we've got a weird show for you. It's uh, kind of a best of dumb crime, stupid criminals. We've got a lot of weird stories that have popped up this week. Um, I do apologize for the late nature of today's show. Uh, I will be uh, forthcoming with you. First of all, Tim is still out dealing with COVID. Uh, we wish him a healthy and speedy full recovery. Uh, I have spent the last two days dealing with a bullying issue with one of my children. No, I'm not being bullied by one of my children. I, uh, am just dealing with something they're dealing with at school. And man, I just got to tell you folks, sit your kids down, your grandkids, your nephews, your nieces, your godchildren, whoever you're responsible for, and just talk to them about bullying and the ignorance of it and how quickly things can escalate. And, you know, now I sit at the precipice of how far do I take this thing? How far do I take somebody threatening my child? Is it just a blowhard? Is it just a, you know, in my day, usually the kids shooting their mouth off the worst were the ones that you didn't have to worry about. It's the silent people that don't let you know they're coming for you that were problems. But in this new day and age and environment of strange entitlement and people just not fearing repercussions, you have to look at everything a lot more severely. And I have been put into an awkward position with, do I press charges on a threat? Do I uh, bring this to the attention of the police, uh, the education institute that my child attends? And I am being very um, cautious because, A, I don't need you knowing where my children go to school. But more importantly, I don't want to out the school. They really had no hand in this other than it is one of the kids at school bullying my child on the off school hours. And because there is threats involved, uh, I thought that the school should know. We talked briefly with them. They prefer to keep things under wraps and, and deal with the parents, but I'm not allowed to contact the parents. I'm not allowed to talk to the child that's bullying my child. So that does make you feel like your wings are a little pinched back. However, I have uh, assured the, the principal at the school that, Hey, you know, I've got screen captures of, of all of these threats. And uh, at this point I will stand back and hope that the parents do the right thing and hope that this student does the right thing. Otherwise. Uh, and I said, if, if, you know, just make sure they're fully aware that if this person crosses any line with my child, I will press every possible charge I can. And it's just a weird time to be alive and in, in dealing with this, you know, God, I, I went to school. I, you know, yeah, I was bullied. I was beat up on a, on occasion and, and had some of that going, but I never feared for my life. I just feared an ass kicking kids today take things to a totally different level and everybody seems to have access to weapons and it's, it's chilling. And then you've got to deal with the PTSD for your own child having to worry about going to school. So I'm just begging you as a parent, uh, 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 an adult leader, just talk to the children in your life and let them know that these things are just not acceptable. That's all I can ask. And uh, joining me uh, for Dumb Crimes, Stupid Criminals, which is, I think it's our chomp, uh, choke, chomp, chew edition. And you'll find out why as we continue is my lovely and talented wife, Winnie. Uh, Hello. Uh, this, did you deal with much bullying when you were in school? Um, just a very little, I don't know. I was such a happy go lucky kid that just got along with everybody. Mm -hmm. I was usually the one that was shutting the bullies down at school saying, Hey, this isn't cool. You don't do this. Um, I mean, I had people pick on me here and there, but nothing to the point where it made me feel like I was alone or isolated or picked on or singled out or anything like that. But my sister was, so I was kind of my sister's protector. <laughs> Um, as we went through the school ages. So, yeah, well, today, uh, the entire day was eaten up dealing with this um, mm -hmm. and and going back and forth between uh, attorneys and uh, friends that are in the law enforcement field, the school, my own child. And it's just a, it's a weird position to be in. Yeah. And, and you realize that, the, you know, the kids kind of have you under uh, bullying as well, because it's like. You know, I don't want to do something that's going to per put a permanent mark on somebody's record mm -hmm. uh, and, and possibly send them down a much darker path just because they ran their mouth. But in this day and age, you can't not say something. So, again, I did 
educate the school about this threat and they have uh, contacted the police liaison. Uh, they're going, you know, as I said, they've made a call to the parents. They're going to speak with the student um, and, and let the chips fall where they may. But, you know, it's just weird. I, I what just happened to you get your ass kicked and, and that's it. And, you know, you, you talk to the parents and things rationally settle. Mm-hmm. I just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's bizarre. It's it a is strange, bizarre. sad, sick world. Yeah. What can you do? It's like a double-edged sword. Yeah. Well, speaking of strange, sick, twisted world, Marilyn Manson is in the headlines right now. Authorities searched Marilyn Manson's West Hollywood home Monday as part of a probe into sexual assault claims, according to a report. Officials with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department confirmed to the Post that about 8 to 10 investigators with the Special Victims Bureau forced entry and executed a search warrant at Manson's Hollywood home around 7 a.m. on Monday, November 29th. Manson was not there, but investigators searched the home for about four to five hours, seizing various media storage devices, including thumb drives and hard drives, officials said. The search was made in connection to an ongoing investigation concerning allegations of domestic violence and sexual assault filed against the singer back in 2019. A spokeswoman for the sheriff's office said she was aware of the report but couldn't confirm the search or offer any details as of Monday night, Tuesday morning. Detectives with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office began investigating Marilyn Manson over reports of domestic violence between 2009 and 2011. The dope show singer, whose real name is Brian Warner, has been hit with assault and abuse allegations from numerous women, including his former fiance, Westworld actor Evan Rachel Wood. Wood named Manson as her abuser for the first time in a February Instagram post. Some of Manson's accusers have filed lawsuits, including Game of Thrones actor Esme Bianco. Bianco alleges in the suit filed in federal court that the shock rocker sexually, physically, and emotionally abused her. Manson deprived Bianco of food and sleep, locked her in a bedroom, whipped her, gave her electric shocks, and threatened to enter her room and forcibly have sex with her during the night, the lawsuit alleges. A Rolling Stone report earlier this month outlined accusations that the singer locked women into a music studio called the Bad Girls Room as a form of punishment. Manson, of course, has denied these allegations. His lawyer, Howard King, has called them provably false. A spokesperson for Manson didn't immediately respond to an inquiry regarding this story. You know that there are, this is another one of those cases that so many people have been slowly crawling out of the woodwork, making these claims. Now you have to, you have to ask, is this, um, you know, he's, he's gotta be an easy target. He's, he's a strange fella, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I don't want to dismiss the women's claims at all, but boy, if you wanted an easier mark, this guy seems like he would be the one to take a shot at. It'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out, but that he has so many prominent name actresses and people in his life that are coming forward about this again, would lend to the credibility of these cases building against him. Yeah. Cause I know, I know when he was married to, um, Rose McGowan, I mean, she like publicly said they were into like kinky stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't know if um, there's sour grapes going on or if this something was somebody that was not consenting to it. I It's hard to say because it's Marilyn Manson. He does. I mean, he looks and he is kind of a unique individual. And, right. it's, you know, there's always been, you know, rumors that he's done weird things sexual things and stuff like that so you know i guess we're just gonna have to wait and see what what the courts say and what evidence comes out against them yeah it's it's gonna be bizarre you know if if he's found guilty of this should the music be pulled from services or does do we separate the art from the artist that's been Mm -hmm. the hardest thing for years, right? When you hear about, you know, Chuck Berry, when he ran his bar, restaurant, whatever, he had cameras in the female bathroom filming women uh, going to the bathroom, you know, strange. Michael Jackson, of course, having many allegations uh, levied against him. And again, we got to go with allegations because he's never been found guilty in any of those cases. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, where do you separate the crime from the, 
the art itself do we overlook and well because uh, truthfully i'm not a big Marilyn manson fan the songs i think he did best were all cover versions mm -hmm. um and i enjoy those songs but it's like kind of you know puts a bad taste in your mouth but is it enough that we cancel culture the music do we cancel culture these things if he is found guilty beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. well i mean it's kind of like that with all those type of you know those hardcore rock guys i mean back in the in the 90s you had satanic panic where every time like if you listen to metallica you were into weird satanic weird just drugs and all this stuff and they just associated with music so i don't know if they're associating Mar marilyn manson being marilyn manson with the sexual assault thing or what not? Because I mean, there's been so many rumors over the years since he even started with. Right. But again, it'd be easy to cast dispersions on a guy who looks and dresses like he does mm -hmm. and, and just automatically assume he's into dark, creepy, weird stuff. Exactly. Uh, and I'm not standing up for him. I'm just, you know, it's, it's always one of those deals. But like I said, because of the amount of people and the people that have come forward, it really has to make you wonder mm -hmm. if there's more to it. Listen, I know while I was gone filming for two and a half months, uh, you know, very rarely able to actually see you, you were doing a lot of, uh, TV surfing on Netflix and catching these shows. Did you watch the squid game? Uh, you know, I was going to watch squid squid game, but then I'm like, you know, everyone was saying you have to watch it in the Korean language and you get the subtitles. I can't do subtitles because <laughs> I have to focus on the words and I'm not focusing on what's going on on the TV. So I have not watched it. And it's kind of a show where I'm like, eh, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe someday I'll get to it. Well, Squid Game Smuggler is set to die by firing squad in North Korea. Hmm. A smuggler who sold copies of Netflix smash hit series Squid Game in North Korea has been sentenced to death by firing squad, according to a report. The man allegedly smuggled copies of the Korean language show on USB drives from China into North Korea, where seven high school students were caught watching the footage, sources told Radio Free Asia. A student who bought one of the flash drives received a life sentence while six others who watched the footage have been sentenced to five years of hard labor. <laughs> wow, do they take this thing to the, to the yeah. nth degree. Teachers and administrators at the school were also fired or face forced labor in remote mines, sources told the outlet. Radio Free Asia reported last week that the hit series had made its way in the reclusive hermit kingdom despite efforts by North Korean authorities to keep it out of the country where foreign media is banned. So just for watching this, yeah. five years of hard labor in a North Korean jail prison system that does not sound fun i think the guy that uh is getting the firing squad is getting out easy yeah right Holy i mean <laughs> just for <laughs> wow yeah, <laughs> yeah. radio I'm free not... asia reported last week that the hit series had made its way into the reclusive uh kingdom and and like they said north korea authorities keep things out of the country that are not made there the dystopian graphic and violent show about 456 debt-ridden south koreans playing a series of life or death children's games for a chance to win 38 million resonates with north koreans especially the rich presidents of pyongyang uh sources told rfa now squid game has been able to enter the country on memory storage devices such as usb flash drives and sd cards which are smuggled in by ship and then make their way inland a uh, resident of pyongsong told the rfa they say that the content is similar to the lives of the pyongyang officials who fight in the foreign currency market as if it is a fight for life or death the plot of the show parallels the reality for some in north korea who uh, where those who earn too much money could be executed at any time what wow. the hell kind of world this sounds like a crazy ass dystopian insanity and it's not that's the reality of what's going on in north korea To the there, unusually... but, I don't what? know. They take their stuff seriously over there, but yeah. I, I mean, uh, to, to put, put in front of a firing squad just by pirating something and then getting five years hard labor just watching it. 
uh, I don't want to watch it now. No. <laughs> I'm afraid. No, I'm afraid of all those uh, copies of uh, Demon in the White House I sent over to North Korea. <laughs> I thought I was doing him a favor. Right. Good God. The law enforcement source in North Hamyong province, which shares a border with China, told RFA Monday a high school student watched Squid Game in a classroom with one of his friends. The friend told several other students who became interested and they shared the flash drive. The source said they were caught by the censors in 109 Sangmu, who had received a tip off the government strike force against outside media surveillance bureau group 109, then arrested the seven students in what's believed to be the first time North Korea is applying the new law in a case involving minors. Authorities then stated or started scouring nearby markets for any other memory storage devices and foreign media after the students were caught. One North Hamyang uh, source said the residents are all trembling in fear because they will be mercilessly punished for buying or selling, selling memory storage devices, no matter how small, a second source told RFA. But regardless of how strict the government's crackdown seems to be, rumors are circulating that among the seven arrested students, one with rich parents was able to avoid punishment because they bribed the authorities for $3,000. <laughs> North Korea passed a law last year on elimination of reactionary thought and culture. Mm. That's terrifying. So it seems like Squid Game is becoming a reality show. Yeah, well, I think it was to begin with. Uh, this carries a maximum penalty of death for watching, possession, or distribution of media from capitalist countries like South Korea and the U.S., Law enforcement is not playing around with the new law, and they are fiercely trying to root out every instance of capitalist culture, a second source told RFA. But times are tough due to the pandemic, so even the police are struggling to make ends meet. Putting a few bucks in their pocket will make them go away if you get caught watching South Korean media. Hmm. A message seeking from Netflix by The Post was not immediately returned Wednesday. Do you think they're going to say, like, hey, we're, we're waiving our rights to punish. Don't, don't go after them. <laughs> Good that's God. right. Oh, gosh, that's scary. <laughs> it's terrifying. I mean, I'm uh, glad I don't live in North Korea. Yeah, right. I, yeah, well, let's, I'll stay here. Let's go somewhere safer for our next story. We're going to head to Russia. Oh, OK. <laughs> a headless body falls out of a cannibal's car after a crash. Remember the old uh, choke uh, chomp chew? Here's the chew part of today's story. Oh. A purported Russian cannibal and two other men were arrested after police discovered a decapitated body at the scene of a car crash. The body fell out of the trunk of a Mitsubishi when it crashed into a highway fence on the side of a highway in Leningrad region last week, according to a rough translation of a report by the state news agency TASS. Cops arrested three suspects, two of whom allegedly drunkenly murdered a man in St. Petersburg garage, which they then set on fire, the wire service reported. The suspects then fled the scene and crashed the car, but not before one of them reportedly engaged in cannibalism. <gasps> he says, I nibbled just to take a taste. 23-year-old <laughs> Yegor Komarov said in court, according to the footage of the court hearing reported on the Daily Beast, are you ready to eat human again? An interrogator reportedly asked. Mm. Do you have some? The suspect replied. Oh. Wow. Kamarov was uh, also admitted to murdering and eating a man last September without any reason and said <coughs> he's hunted for victims in a local park, according to a report and the wire service. I like that their, you know, their question is, Comrade, are you ready to eat human again? Why? Do you have some? <laughs> Do you have any cheese in can to go with it? Very good. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, what? Why would you? What would possess you to look at a body, a dead body, and say, you know, I need a snack? <laughs> hey, just... you know what? If you crash on the side of a mountain and there's no food, and you know, I understand that whole alive thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. I'm still perplexed that the part they carved off first were ass cheeks in that story. <laughs> Uh, but I guess it's the fleshiest, meatiest part, uh, mm -hmm. and you do what you have to do. You know, the Donner past stories and everything is, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know that it's so far removed. Uh, you know, uh, many cultures have done it, but uh, I certainly I'm going to continue to frown upon it. I'm, I guess I'm, yeah. I'm old that way. Well, the hits just keep on coming. A severed foot found by a group of children back in 2000. 2019 has now been identified as that of Justino 
Cordovilla, a convicted drug trafficker who went missing after turning witness against his former associates. The Civil Guard Command of Madrid confirmed on Monday that Cordovilla had been reported as missing two months before the foot was found. He was under witness protection at the time. Cordovilla was arrested in 2009 in Costa Rica with six kilos of cocaine and subsequently sentenced to 10 years in prison. But after six months in prison, he began to cooperate with authorities and was able to help convict several members of the gang that he was a part of. He was then extradited to Spain under a witness protection program. And as of 2019, it was believed Cordovilla was living in Colado, Velalaba, a medium-sized town located to the northwest of Madrid. Authorities believe that Cordovilla may have been the victim of a revenge killing attack for his betrayal of the gang. However, they are still investigating other possibilities for the discovery of this foot. What other possibilities could there be? Well, in the simple fact, too, I mean, every time I drive down the freeway, I always see like a random just one shoe sitting on the shoulder of the freeway. This is taking it to a whole new level. Because I'm like, how does that shoe get there? So, like, how does a foot just get on the side of the road? And, I mean, that would be so awkward to find. Well, that's I'm, I'm trying to understand this. They're, you know, they're, they're, hey, it could be victim of revenge killing or betrayal <laughs> of gang. But we're still investigating other possibilities. Maybe he wanted to lose weight and just <laughs> decided to cut off a foot. I don't know. Maybe he thought he was too tall and wanted to cut off a foot and didn't realize that it didn't take him down 12 inches. I don't know. The severed foot was found in the Laguna del Campillo in the municipality of Rivas next to the Jarama River, which I'm sure mm -hmm. I butchered every one of those words. Originally, authorities thought that the foot could have been that of a man injured during a strong storm that hit the Aganda del Rey area in the days before its discovery. It must have been a goddamn strong storm to take off your foot. <laughs> yeah. I've been in some rainstorms, my friends. I've been pelted with uh, nickel size hail, and never once have I thought, oh, <laughs> shit, my foot's going to blow off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. However, no injuries were reported as a result of that storm, despite the structural damage it caused, and his theory was ruled out. The foot was then sent by civil guard to the forensic anatomical institute for analysis with hopes of identifying who it, uh, identifying who it belonged to they were able to conclude that it belonged to a middle-aged caucasian man who may have died a while ago oh uh, well, listen I... i'm no csi guy but i'm pretty sure i could have told you that by looking at it well yeah it's not like he's walking around hobbling on one foot and asking where the lost and found is yeah. I, mean... I was caught up in a horrible storm <laughs> has anyone seen my foot <laughs> authorities eventually linked the severed foot to the unsolved disappearance of cordovilla on june 9th 2019 the calado Villaba country club organized an excur excursion to attend a bullfight in las ventas upon leaving it was discovered that cordovilla was no longer among those on the trip his friends and family subsequently searched for him in madrid but were unsuccessful cordovilla's sister recently took a dna test that was sent to the national institute of toxicology and forensic science this confirmed that the foot did indeed belong to cordovilla Investigators are continuing to work out to find exactly what happened to him and are collecting testimonies from the bullfighting club and Cordovilla's friends and family. Newsweek has contacted the Civil Guard Command of Madrid for a comment. Hmm. I just, I, 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 you know, oh, maybe he was killed by revenge killing or something else. Yeah. Again, <laughs> that's just, or what? Bad poker bet? I don't, <laughs> I don't understand this. It, it, this is so bizarre, but things just keep getting better, folks. Because oh. we've got we've got a prosthetic leg story coming at you. <laughs> this is just one of the most bizarre tales. A fan during the Vegas Golden Knights game against the Edmonton Oilers on Saturday added a completely new twist to the sporting event brawl, taking off her prosthetic leg and using it to hit someone. In a video posted to Twitter, the woman, as well as others around her, including one fan in Marc-Andre Fleury, uh, Jersey had turned to the row behind her to engage fans in a scuffle. The woman then reached toward her left knee, ripped off the leg and appeared to swing it towards the other fans. Oh my God. And for those of you watching along, there's the photo. You could see her reaching down, grabbing at her, uh, left leg. And then she's just nubbing it. <laughs> she's swinging like a freaking batter. <laughs> I wonder if she got the penalty oh. of high sticking in the audience. Oh, Oh, my God. 
Oh, those hockey games can get rowdy. <laughs> yeah, the woman's arms were covered in the video by a fan standing next to her, so it's unclear if the prosthetic leg actually made contact. <laughs> It's the latest fan fight to circulate on social media. In the past month alone, Cowboys fans were involved in an altercation with a concessions worker during the Thanksgiving Day game while a Titan supporter was dragged down the SoFi Stadium steps during their Sunday night football victory over the Rams. The Golden Knights lost to the Oilers on Saturday, 3-2, after allowing two goals in the final three minutes of the opening period and never recovering. It was just their third loss. In the past nine games, though, they did sit fourth in the Pacific Division with 24 points. All information none of you give a shit about. <laughs> and uh, but the fact that they she just pulls off this prosthetic leg mm -hmm. and goes to town on it. Is yeah, just it's nuts. And just watching her. I, you know, I'm going to try to pull this up and see if I can show this this video. I'm not sure how this how this works. Let me see if I can. Uh, Oh my goodness. Uh, not that share screen. Let me see if that's how I want to do it. And then edge tab. Uh, yes. Prosthetic leg. Yes. I think this should be the one I want to share. Okay. So now we've got this up <laughs> on this video. Uh, I'm going to try to, uh, to play this video now and see if, if you can actually see it for those of you watching on uh, darkness radios, uh, page, let's take a look. No, it's not showing for some reason. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know why it's why it's not. Oh, I wonder if I. Oh, you know what it is? I know what's going on. We'll have to let me take it back to the beginning. Okay. We're gonna take it back, and then I'm going to pull down the picture of the leg. There we go. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking with gas. Let me see if I can inflate the screen here a little bit, and uh, let's let's again take another quick peek at at this insanity all right here we go oh, oh there we go let me see it's not wanting to play now is it good grief let me try replaying it again it's just so, so there it is she reaches down just grabs it <laughs> without a thought and it just starts kicking the shit out of somebody with her heel yeah well like that, i said boom, there it goes <laughs> she just ripped it right off She's got no problem with it. It's just like this. This has got to happen. Sorry, this is uh, this is the way things go. Yeah, when you well, like, we, see what you get when you mess with the Warriors, <laughs> you get a leg to the face. Oh my God, how bizarre! Yeah. We've got more stories. Stay tuned. All right, more dumb crimes, stupid criminals. Why? Because I like you. That's why. WFLA, the Flay, reports on this next story for us. Oh, God. Citrus County, Florida. A Florida woman was arrested Sunday after police say she walked into a Citrus County home and began to undress herself, then began hugging and sitting on multiple people, including several who were 65 years or older. I think that's a weird thing to bring up. <laughs> you know, is it is there any age that it was like it would have been acceptable if there was 64 and below but 65 and older is just weird police say 35 year old heather cruz of Danellian walked into the citrus county home through a side door once inside cruz removed her clothing exposing her genitalia before she grabbed and hugged the homeowner according to police when cruz was told to stop documents say she sat on the lap of two other residents while naked saying, you like it, to one of the victims. <laughs> I'm only assuming that's the way she said it. I don't know how she, you know, she sits down, she's like, you like it? Maybe it's that, maybe you like it? Police say two of the home's occupants then attempted to remove Cruz and escort her to the front door. At that time, still nude, Cruz reportedly grabbed the testicles of another individual and began uh -huh. making several sexual remarks. Oh, I, I, I don't even want to know what he said, but I have a feeling looking at her picture, she's got a lot of vocal fry. You think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you, think it, do you think it sounded like this then? Do you like Imagine Dragons? Imagine it's Dragons? Perfect. Yeah, Imagine Dragon these balls all over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't exactly. Know. When police arrived, Cruz was ordered to put on a shirt. 
<laughs> I like that they didn't worry about her britches. Just put on a shirt. <laughs> But she's accused of resisting officers. Cruz then handcuffed and placed in the rear of a patrol car. When officers attempted to close the door, they say Cruz kicked an officer in the chest. More officers arrived. <laughs> of course. One Charlie one. We got a naked woman. Uh, all, all hands on deck. All hands on deck. <laughs> you know, meanwhile, there's shoplifting at Walmart, but the, there's 400 cops outside checking out uh, Ms. Cruz's you know, nakedness. <laughs> Cruz now faces three counts of battery on persons 65 years or older. Yes, folks, simply inappropriate touching is considered battery. So just by sitting on their lap. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if any of them are like, eh, I got no problem. I won't be pressing charges. No, maybe not. They're yeah. 65 and, you know, one, <laughs> maybe. you know, two counts of battery on a law enforcement officer. That one's going to be hard to get out of. Mm -hmm. And one yep. count of resisting an officer with violence, burglary with battery, exposure of sexual organs, and battery. Cruz was transported to the Citrus County Detention Facility. Held on $48,000 bail. I'm oh. going to guess there is some kind of drug involved. Yeah, because I don't think anybody would want to do that sober. I don't. I don't <laughs> well, I, I can't say that. I know some people that, that dig that kind of shenanigans. And she's a pretty girl. I don't understand it. So she couldn't have been hard up for love. No, or I, That's why I think there's got to be drugs involved in the story somehow. Well, may, I don't know. Maybe she's into older men. I don't know. And she just can't find the right one that she's trying to. And nobody's taking her up on her offer. I don't know. Well. These two decided to take themselves up on their own offer. Mm. Look at that happy couple. Uh, I'm going to read the headline as written. Florida couple has screw you sex in the back of a trooper's car. <laughs> and they record that act for their OnlyFans page, as one is wont to do. Now, OnlyFans, for those of you that don't understand what that is, is it is a website basically that is uh, you, amateur people out there, uh, creating porn. And my understanding is some famous porn and, and celebrity actresses also do uh, photo layouts and things, and they call them art, and you can go pay a subscription to access their art. So this couple, a man and a woman in Collier County, Florida, both with suspended licenses, were hauled off to jail after they allegedly recorded themselves having sex in a trooper's squad car. That incident happened near I-75 last Thursday. Now listen, hmm. honey. You know, you and I, we're all for the excitement of sex in forbidden places. But oh, yeah. I think during the midst of an uh, an arrest, probably not the best time. No, it almost sounds like it was a dare that got went wrong or something uh, like that. Like, I dare you to. like. Are, still, what are you thinking? The trooper I... offered to give the couple, Jordan Noah and Summer Watkins, a ride to the gas station so they could meet someone for a ride home. So this guy wasn't even booking them on their suspended license. They got tickets. I'm going to do you a favor and give you a ride to a gas station to call for help. While in the back of the car, Watkins reportedly yelled, baby, we should record an OnlyFans video back here. What if I just something back here? She told the trooper. Uh, yeah, the New York Post reported, I told her that she, in fact, could not do that. Trooper J.D. Perez Morales wrote just to hear her again, allegedly ask, can I suck his back here or what? After again saying no, what a party pooper, the officer let them alone in the back of the car for a short period. He was asking for it. Come on. Yeah, right? That's I mean... when you separate them. <laughs> Only to later see what really went down when he reviewed the prisoner video footage. He wrote, shortly after I closed the door, Mr. Noah said, hold on while I whip this out. And Watkins <laughs> then bent down and began to uh, begin an oral dissertation. According to Perez Morales, uh, Watkins can be heard saying F the five O while giving oral sex. We all know you're not supposed to talk with your mouth full. Come on. Where's the cooth? While Noah filmed it on his phone yelling, can y'all hear me? She's in the back of the state trooper car right now. This is classy. As uh -huh. Noah FaceTimed a friend, Watkins bragged, I just is dick in the back of a police car, the report said. When troopers searched Noah's vehicle, they discovered marijuana and codeine. Watkins was charged with lewd and lascivious behavior and breach of the peace. Now was charged with possession of a controlled substance, possession of marijuana, breach of the peace, indecent exposure of a sexual organ, and lewd and lascivious behavior. Good. <laughs> 
God. I, ho- I hope. I just hope that Trooper was like, if you don't knock it off back there, I'm turning this squad car <laughs> around and I'm no, well, dropping he, you off where I picked you up. <laughs> they did it while he was out of the car. Oh, gross. Yes. Ew. Not that that would have been good if it was in the car. That would still be like, what the... What are you doing? Well, those are the very reasons why in the back of a squad car, everything is plastic so it can get hosed out. (laughs) Oh, gross. (laughs) Well, since we're on the weird and unusual, let me throw to this next story. This one just hurts to read. A webcam model accidentally shot herself in the vagina with a nine millimeter handgun while recording a video earlier this month in her Georgia home, according Uh. to a police report. Responding to an accidental gunshot wound oh God! <laughs> at a residence in Thomaston, a city 40 miles from Macon, a sheriff's deputy encountered an EMS worker in the property's driveway around noon on November 9th. The paramedic, who was holding an unloaded handgun and a spent bullet casing in her hands, explained that the female had shot herself in the vagina accidentally. Did we need to involve the word accidentally? <laughs> According to interviews with other residents of the home, deputies determined that Lauren Hunter Damon, 27, was apparently alone inside her bedroom when the gun discharged. Jordan Allen, who said he owned the firearm, told deputies he was in the kitchen when he heard a gunshot. Upon reaching the bedroom, he found Damon with a small amount of blood on her leg. Allen advised that she started saying that she was sorry. He advised that she told him that she shot herself accidentally. What are you? Hmm. Don't, oh. why you don't want to that's a boom boom bad in the cha-cha yeah uh, well, which i you... think used to be a lou vega song wasn't it boom boom bad in the cha-cha <laughs> alan, i don't know <laughs> alan told deputies that damon has subscribers on a sexual web platform called chatter and that she makes sexual videos of herself and people pay her to see them alan advised that he thinks that she was recording a video at the time and the gun went off hmm. Hmm. A second witness, Addie Ruth Johnson, told deputies that Damon had walked into the home's living room saying that she accidentally shot herself. It appears that the web platform to which Alan referred is actually Chatterbait. Its nickname is Chatter, but it's Chatterbait. A po- oh, well. Sh- a, yeah, a popular adult site that lets models receive tips from viewers in return for the performance of the requested acts. It is unclear whether Damon was broadcasting live when the gun discharged or whether she was recording a video that would be uploaded to Chatterbait at another time. <laughs> God. Yeah. Damon was transported from her home to the parking lot of the Upson County Sheriff's Office, where a helicopter then flew her to Macon Hospital. Mm. So could you, you got the helicopter pilot. So uh, <laughs> what happened? She <laughs> yeah. shot herself in the cha-cha. Good God. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Oh. Oh, the shooting, which police classified as reckless conduct, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is unlikely to result in criminal charges. I think her punishment has been meted out pretty well. According to Sheriff Dan Kilgore, during police interviews, Damon's account of the shooting fluctuated, Kilgore said, with her claiming at one point the gun went off during a consensual sex act with Allen. Ooh, she's trying to throow him under the bus. Oh. Yeah, well, she. it sounds like that scene from The Sopranos. Yeah, right? Mm. <laughs> Well, at least it wasn't in the head like it was in the Sopranos. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. This, uh, I know you're thinking there's, at least we know we're past the weirdest stories. Oh, we're not. <laughs> we're not. Horrified passengers mm. had quite a sight this week. I love the U.S. Sun's uh, title for this article, Milking It. Woman found breastfeeding a cat. On board a flight in front of horrified passengers. Mm. Passengers were left feeling just a little sick when they reportedly spotted a woman breastfeeding her cat on board a flight. Why? Uh, Why? I I don't know. (laughs) That cat was hungry, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) According to a now viral message, which appears to be from the pilot, the woman refused to stop the questionable activity or cat-tivity despite repeated pleas from the cabin crew. Horrified passengers on board Delta Air Flight DL-1360 to Atlanta reportedly watched on in horror as the woman took caring for her cat just a step too far. As the woman 
oh god I, I this is one of those kind of stories that i just sit back and i go i what would you do i mean in all honesty we'll get back to the the story in a second but what would you do if you're on a plane somebody just whips out a booby and starts breastfeeding their cat oh i would just stare at her and give her the most disgusted look i could give her for the whole flight what if the cat's <laughs> happy though what if the cat seems like it's enjoying the meal well, they have bottles for that. <laughs> they don't... <laughs> Who are we to judge? I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, the woman would not put her pet back in its carrier. Uh, I don't know if that's a euphemism for her boob and her bra or if she meant the cat <laughs> back in. The pilot demanded Delta's red coat ground team meet the customer after landing to reprimand her. An aircraft communications addressing and reporting system message reportedly from the flight's crew reads... Requires red coat, meet AC PAX passenger in seat 13A, breastfeeding a cat and will not put the cat back in its carrier when the flight attendant requested. So I wonder if she'd have just like uncoupled, put the cat away, burped the cat, whatever. <laughs> would there have been, would they have called for the red coats? Would they have just let the, the breastfeeding slip? I have no idea because that that's just awkward to begin with. To, yeah. to have your cat breastfeeding on a plane and then refusing anywhere. to put it back in the well, yeah, anywhere, but like on a plane. I mean, because you're in close vicinity to other people, it's not like you can go off and hide somewhere, right? <laughs> and feed your cat if that's what you're into. Yeah, I mean, yeah, why not just go to the bathroom and do this? <laughs> I know, you I know mean, what it, the I, I don't get it. The, the American uh, airline system, I guess, has really been dealing with a lot of trauma this year. They've had uh, quite an uptick in strange activity, strange claims, um, mm -hmm. uh, people just being idiots, which, you know, you and I have been on enough flights. We've seen that kind of shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, American Airlines has experienced an 84% surge in incidents relating to emotional support animals in the mm -hmm. past few years, forcing them to tighten regulations. But unlike this case, it's usually the animal acting up and not their owner. Rules state that the passengers are allowed to bring their small dogs and cats in the cabin, but must stay in a case under the seat in front of them the entire time. And it does pose a question our, our friend Ralph Basham brought up today. You know, you can't have peanuts on a flight because somebody might be allergic. Mm -hmm. So they stop serving peanuts. But what if there are people that are just like, I mean, you know, our son, Nathan, he is really, really allergic to cats. And yeah. if he comes to visit us uh, and he's in the house for more than a half an hour, he's sick for a few days. So we yeah. usually go meet him somewhere else and, and keep his, I don't know, on a, on a flight. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how what their protocol is because I know they limit how many pets are on a flight. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, there's some people who go, have asthma attacks being around cats and dogs right. because of the dander. So I I don't know. I don't know if the airlines because I've never traveled with a pet, so I'm not sure what what the process is. But I'm assuming they alert other passengers to let them know that there I will don't... be. I've never Animals? been alerted. I've been on, okay. on planes constantly where they've got their dogs and cats and guinea pigs. I saw an emotional guinea pig. <laughs> well, I mean, the guinea pig was not emotional, but <laughs> the guinea pig's like, where, where are we going? I'm just not prepared for this. I'm stressed. Right. The phrase emotionally supportive has been interpreted broadly over the years. And in a mm -hmm. statement, Delta said that they had seen comfort turkeys. Hmm. Mm. There's nothing well, I, more comforting than a turkey. I've gotten why <laughs> I've gotten comfort from wild turkey on a flight before. Uh, also, sugar <laughs> gliders, snakes, spiders, and more taken on planes. How you are not a spider person. I am not a snake person. If somebody just whips one of those out next to you and they're like, "Oh, this is my emotional support spider," it's going to meet the bottom of your shoe, isn't it? Well, no, no, I, I respect the animals. I, I don't like spiders, but I respect them. They can stay outside my home. They have no reason to be on a plane. There's no emotional support coming from a spider. They, <laughs> they're they creepy eight-legged things that just don't need to be outside of an aquarium if you want one as a pet. It stays in there. Same with snakes. You are a spider elitist. That's all I'm saying. Well, I'm sorry. There, what comfort can that thing give you? <laughs> I mean, crawling I your know. face, picking your ear. Well, have you seen ear? those people that, like, on videos, they open their mouth and those giant tarantulas oh, come crawling God. out? Oh, God. 
Now, over the years, a host of bizarre animals have been spotted, including ducks, turkeys, and even miniature horses. Mm -hmm. Emotional support animals are different from service animals in that they don't help their owners with a disability. Instead, they provide help for problems, including PTSD. Miniature horse. I did see pictures of it. All right. Well, hold on. Hold on. Instead, as I said, these provide help. With the horse, but. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, to see that horse wedged in between the seats. <laughs> was, yeah, and he falls I, asleep. And horses don't, they're not great at holding in poop and pee. No. If you've ever been in a parade, you'll see that. Well, yeah, they're like goats. They just go as they walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <sighs> mm. Yeah, uh, a number of airlines are banning emotional support animals, uh, but many still allow them. It's for helping people with PTSD, anxiety, or depression. And I don't, I wouldn't want to take that away, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you want to be on, on a plane with an, you know, an emotional support turkey? No. I, just, I just don't see the correlation of how a turkey can be calming to somebody. I mean, I can understand <laughs> a dog or a cat, something fluffy and cute and soft just, that likes you, to cuddle. You're but... just starting to calm down and all of a sudden... <laughs> I mean, you think they're pert velociraptors. So they I are. <laughs> when we first bought our house, they I went out, there were wild turkeys in our backyard. They were like the velociraptors from Jurassic World. <laughs> they were stalking me. They were nine feet tall and chittering and running around chasing me. It was horrifying. Yeah. That's why I don't go in the out of doors. <laughs> uh, in one case, an emotional support duck named Daniel joined a passenger who suffered for PTSD. He was brought on board to help her when she's about to have a panic attack. How does a duck help somebody with a panic attack? He puts his feet on her chest so she'll lie down. <laughs> well, that dominant duck. You can't really lie out on a plane anyway. Yeah. Well, Meanwhile, in 2019, the, the miniature pony graced an American airline flight. The horse is called Flirty and even has its own Instagram and Twitter account. Uh. <laughs> Uh, her owner wrote on social media, once we get up to cruising altitude, she just takes a nap. She's very quiet. Oh, that okay. being said, I'm going to keep traveling by car. It's just easier on flirty. Yeah, let's worry <laughs> about flirty. Not the poor guy has to sit next to you smelling horse farts. <laughs> it is a cute horse, though, uh-huh. I must say. Well, since we're rarefied air, uh, we'll stick in the sky here. We've got a, a strange story to share. Oh, God. <laughs> A woman attacks a Spirit Airlines flight attendant after she allegedly got drunk. A woman needed to be restrained by fellow passengers on a Spirit Airline flight to Nashville on Saturday when she got drunk and attacked two flight attendants. A 42-year-old woman was charged with public intoxication, court records show. The suspect yelled at arresting officers to shoot me (laughs) and told them, I'm out a lot to drink, according to the Tennessean. The woman allegedly punched one flight attendant and pulled another one's hair. During the 6 p.m. flight from Fort Lauderdale, the passenger restrained her feet with zip ties when the plane landed and then resisted getting into a police cruiser at Nashville International Airport at 7 p.m. The woman spent the night in jail but was released Sunday morning when her case was dismissed because the flight crew declined to press charges, according to court records. Why is that? Because they don't want more bad press? I think you should press charges so jackasses like that, people will know, you know, if I go on that flight on Delta, I'm safe or mm-hmm. spirit. I don't have to worry. Yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't yeah. press charges because isn't it a, it's a federal offense to attack a well, flight it's a, attendant. It's an attack. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you know, especially since 9-11. What's mm-hmm. weird is they say we do not to- tolerate aggressive behavior of any kind, and this passenger is no longer welcome on any of our flights. Spirit Ooh. Airlines spokesperson Nicole Aguilar reportedly said, we will work with the relevant authorities to ensure this individual is prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Well, wait a minute. The charges were dropped, but they're going to press charges? I don't understand this. The airline did not immediately respond about the incident or why the charges were dropped. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe one of the flight attendants said something to incite this woman into an attack. And I say that because you and I were just at Walmart (laughs) a couple (laughs) weeks ago. And we're like, it was just a surreal moment as we are leaving Walmart. Mm -hmm. There's this heavy set guy on one of those motorized scooters you can borrow. Yeah. And he's walking with a shorter guy. And one of the employees comes out and I thought they were buddies kind of joking with one another. 
And then he's like, yeah, yeah, keep laughing it up, you fat fuck. If I see <laughs> you and your dipshit friend come in here again, I'm calling the cops. They're going to bounce your ass out of here permanently. And I'm like, what What? What are we seeing? And then <laughs> I don't know. they're just kind of trying to ignore him as they're zipping through the lot <laughs> in their uh, scooter. And, you know, this guy's like walking behind them, henpecking them the entire ride, the Walmart employee. He's like, yeah, yeah, you fat fuck. You don't need that thing. Get off it and walk. So the guy finally gets up and ambles away. Uh, but it was just like, I'm like, I don't, I, I kind of feel like we should go in and report this guy. But I also feel like, hey, I like to know there's somebody here who can handle their shit at Walmart if yeah, there's somebody right? acting like schmucks. And we yeah. didn't see what had happened inside the store that led to this. So I just, I let go and let God and figured everything would work out for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, yeah, the guy could have been shoplifting, who knows. But yeah, yeah that was a very odd moment coming out of Walmart. Uh -huh. But it is Walmart, so what can you do? <laughs> but it is Walmart. Like, that's the acceptable part. <laughs> but it is Walmart. <laughs> so, you know, considering it's probably just better that way. Very yeah. strange. Very, very <laughs> strange. Uh, this is a dumb way to raise money for uh, a way to pay for your criminal defense lawyer. A Florida woman arrested Saturday on a felony narcotics charge told police that she sells fentanyl in order to make money to pay for an attorney for a pending drug charge, according oh. to an arrest report. Nicole Gregory, 28, was busted after a sheriff's deputy spotted her dropping a bag that held four baggies containing the synthetic opioid. The defendant did intend to sell the said substance, the investigator alleged. After being collared on a St. Petersburg street, Gregory reportedly admitted that she sells the drug for 10 bucks a bump. Gregory then claimed she was selling the narcotics to make money for an attorney for a pending drug charge. It's just the cycle of life. Right? Well, hey. Oh, God. She's an entrepreneur. She's trying to raise her own money. She's not asking for... killing people. <laughs> she's like... not asking for charity. Hey, she's only <laughs> asking 10 bucks a bump. According to court <laughs> records, Gregory was arrested last month for selling methamphetamine to an undercover cop. In August, she was charged with possessing fentanyl and meth. Both cases are pending in circuit court. And in addition to the new fentanyl wrap, Gregory was charged with four other drug counts after she was found in possession of meth, morphine, and oxycodone. Mm. She bonded out of jail. Okay, so I'm going to throw this to you now, right? Okay. She's arrested for selling fentanyl to pay her attorney for the drug charges she already faces. She was arrested in August for possessing fentanyl and meth. She was arrested last month for selling meth to an undercover cop. So that's two. This mm -hmm. is the third one in a row. What do you think her bond is? Three drug trafficking selling charges. What How state is it in? It's in the great state of Florida. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. I would say mm, 65,000. 18,000. Wait, okay. So go back to the other story where she only had to pay 48,000 for what was it? <laughs> only. The only 48,000 for, I don't know, was it, was it shooting herself in the vagina? I can't remember. No, no, no. It was the stories. naked chick. It was. The oh naked yeah. The chick. naked chick. Yeah. So the naked chick has to pay well, more money than. But the naked chick kept kicked cops in the chest. <laughs> okay. So well, there was resisting arrest that, that, that makes things a lot worse. I okay. think had she just like left the house naked and they would have thrown her in the cop car and she, if she would have calmed down, she probably mm -hmm. would have been released on like, you know, I don't know if it was Florida, like $8 and, and a subway <laughs> coupon and they'd let her go. Uh, but she was kicking cops. That's where oh. the trouble came in. Okay, but like that's where I think the problem is with the drug problem that we have in this country because a bond oh, wait, you do only tell. Have, well, the bond you only have to pay ten percent, right? So to pay ten percent of eighteen thousand, that's a, not a lot of money, especially for people. And she probably knows people that has that kind of money to bond her out because she sells drugs. So she probably knows people who also sell drugs and have cash on hand. Well, she only needs eighteen hundred. She probably has it as well. Yeah, so it's like I think that's where the drug problem that right there. I think Just her say no. her, her bond needs no. to be up there a little higher. A lot higher. That. A, a lot, lot higher. higher. Just yeah. say no, folks. That's all I'm asking you. Yeah. All right. This is the choke chomp chew edition. Here is our final story. Oh my god, this is one I don't understand as well. 
November 29th, breaking news, a female passenger who choked and took a chomp out of the neck of an Uber driver <gasps> pleaded guilty to a pair of criminal charges in connection with the bloody, unprovoked attack, according to court records. In a plea deal, Michelle Stillwell copped to a battery, battery and disorderly conduct misdemeanor for which she was sentenced. Okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. You choke unprovoked. This guy did nothing to you. He's your Uber driver. And you see the picture I posted, right, for you? Mm -hmm. She yes. literally has him in a chokehold. Yes. She's leaning back. She's got her, she's interlocking her wrists and pressing them against his throat up against the high back headrest. So this guy mm -hmm. has no place to move. She's doing it and she's leaning straight back. She's pulling with all of her might. So mm -hmm. this is, and she bit him in the yeah. neck like a vampire zombie. So <laughs> she she chokes chokes the guy out, bites him in an unprovoked attack. Okay. Yeah. What do you think was her sentence? Uh, let me think. Um, I would say her sentence. She probably had to pay a fine and then uh, community service. For what? What she has to wash cars? How about that? Wash cars. <laughs> All the Uber at cars. The car wash. Yeah. No, in a plea deal, she copped to battery and disorderly conduct misdemeanors for which she was sentenced to eighteen months probation. That's all. That's it. She choked out a guy and bit him, tore a chunk out of his neck. By the way, and unprovoked. So she S right. Stillwell was originally charged in criminal information with battery and witness tampering, which is a felony. Stillwell, a licensed practical nurse, an LPN, was also fined $850. Like you said, there would be a fine, $850, mm -hmm. directed to undergo a mental health evaluation in order to have no contact with Michael Hassey, the 23-year-old victim. Oh, my God. Right. And, and to top nurse. it off, she only gave him a one-star review. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know. That's true at all. As a re as reported in criminal complaints, Stillwell attacked Hassey from behind as he drove his Toyota near Stillwell's St. Petersburg residence in mid-April. While the car was moving, still while it was moving, Stillwell reached forward, proceeded to choke the victim from behind. According to a sheriff's deputy, Stillwell initially choked Hassey with two hands before wrapping an arm around his throat. As Hassey sought to pull over the car, Stillwell, Stillwell managed to crawl forward onto the center console and bite the victim directly on the neck, deeply on the wow. neck. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me just, I, I got to post this picture of her as she's scrambling over the seat. Again, you can go check out Darkness Radio's uh, YouTube page. You'll see the pictures of all of these strange ass stories. Uh, I'm trying to see if it's saved here um, because this is this is a hell of a hell of an image okay. if I can get it. Well, yeah, and that's just terrifying knowing that this guy is just picking up this lady, and I and I'm assuming with Uber drivers they can see who they're picking up. Yeah. So he's like, oh, she's just a you know middle aged woman, whatever, and had no probably inclination that there would be any type of danger, and <laughs> he's getting choked out. Like, uh, it's a wrestling match. And, uh, yeah. Look, that's... look at, there's the picture of her scrambling over. Let me see if I can get it over here now. Uh, I got to pull this picture down so we can see it. There she is. Sc can you oh see my... that? Yeah. She has scrambled over the seat to, uh, in between the seats and then bit him. What kind of lunacy is this woman dealing with that this I... is okay in her world? Uh, so, and, and she only gets probation photos yeah. taken by several witnesses who stepped in to stop the attack show still while choking Hassie and splayed across the Toyota driver's seat. Another image shows the bite mark on Hassie's neck while police and court records do not cite a motive for the Saturday afternoon attack arrest affidavits note that still will displayed an indication of alcohol influence. Well, still, uh, I, what I drink plenty of alcohol i've never had the <laughs> urge to choke somebody out and bite a chunk out of their neck mm -hmm. but there's um, a lot of people out there that will eat uh white castle so i guess <laughs> biting your uber driver is probably healthier well, maybe that's why she did it because he wouldn't take her to white castle because oh, it wasn't on the God. on the docket for uh 
what he picked her up for. So mental cases, mental, mental, mental. Mm -hmm. That's it for this week's dumb crime, stupid criminals, friends. Uh, Again, sorry for no interview this week, but dealing with my own law issues and uh, trying to protect my family uh, took a little precedent today. So I hope that you enjoyed this. And again, keep Tim in your thoughts and prayers. You've been listening to the best in true crime talk radio. This is true crime Tuesday.